Hi everybody, it's Andrea again. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video and um, I'm getting over a cold right now so excuse me if I sound a little congested. And I want to thank Christine for uh, chatting with me on Skype today when um, this idea kind of came up and I was getting her feedback on it and she thought it would be a really good topic. So the topic today is going to be about relationships. Um, when you're diagnosed with MS, it doesn't affect just you, but it affects um, your family, your friends, your spouses, your significant others. Everybody is impacted by your disease in some way. So I wanted to start with um, my relationships. And the most important relationship in my life is with my husband. And I've been very lucky that I have this man by my side because he has been a rock to me. He has seen me at my absolute worst, um, both physically and mentally. And I, I, I don't know if I would have been able to go on and, and be as strong as I have been and do what I've needed to do if it weren't for him. But um, when I was first diagnosed and things were so bad and so scary, I did give him the option of leaving because I knew that it was a progressive disease and it was just going to be, in my mind, especially back then, just going downhill. And my husband happens to be eight years younger than me. So he still, at that time, was a relatively young man. Um, I couldn't have children. And I just thought, you know, I, I told him, you got the raw end of the deal when you marry me. You're still young. You could go out and have a family and go live a normal type of life. And if you want to leave... I understand. I, I don't want anybody to stay with me out of guilt or um, obligation, that type of thing. And then he looked at me and he said, so if I was sick, you would leave me? And I was like, well, no, of course not. And he's like, then why the hell would I leave you? I didn't marry you under the condition that you stay healthy and you you know, or have to be able to have children and, you know, all of that. We had that discussion. And the one thing he did tell me was, if you talk like that and you you keep pushing me away and, and being negative like that, that's what would make me leave you. Um, our relationship, you know, has obviously changed because of this. And men are so different, and he keeps a lot of stuff inside. And I think part of that is because he doesn't want to um, make me stressed out or worry me. But the one thing that has definitely impacted our relationship, and um, I, I don't know how he'll feel about this, but he knows that I have a big mouth and I pretty much discuss everything. Um, but as far as the, the physical side of our relationship, it's pretty much gone down the, the, the toilet, so to speak. Um, when a majority of your body is numb, and I have, especially nowadays, I have this chronic pain that never goes away, and chronic fatigue, and tire easily, um, the amount of energy and the lack of sensation, etc., does not put sex as a, a top priority in my life right now. And I, I feel so incredibly guilty about it and so bad for him. And, and I worry about that. Um, you know, he's still a young man and you know, he should be getting a little. Um, but 
he's he even has said we've discussed it that he's like I wouldn't want you to do something that you didn't enjoy it, it wouldn't be pleasurable for me so um, that's been a hard part of uh, dealing with this in our relationship um, and he never complains never says anything but I know it's got to be there you know they say men thinks about sex how many thousand times a day God knows how many times he's thinking about it and I gotta find the humor in it people because I don't know what else to do I've been very lucky with family um, I have my mother because I'm an only child and uh, it's just been me and her when I was growing up and then um, when I married my husband he has a huge family and so that was kind of a shock to me this huge extended family but they have been um, wonderful and um, supportive and I'm so very thankful and especially to my mother-in-law who has um, just been over backwards and and offered her time to to help me do things come clean my house take me to appointments um, just wanting to come visit me that type of thing um, so I'm I'm very lucky I have a a, a good mother-in-law story um, I have friends and um, I don't have a huge circle of friends I never really did you know you have acquaintances and people that you know they're your friends but your close friends that you discuss everything with you know how women are and um, I've, I've been blessed to have some really good friends friends who have uh, taken vacation days to take me down to California to my doctor's appointments um, I, I have one friend who when she has a day off, you know, come on, we're going to go to lunch. You need to get out of that house. I'll take you shopping. We'll do what you need to do. Um, and I've known her since I was 12, so she's like a sister to me. And I'm so I'm, I'm really lucky. It's, it's not the qual uh, quantity of friends you have, but the quality of them. And so I'm very blessed. But, you know, it has impacted friendships my relationships and I hate that I have to rely on them or to ask you know for help um, it, it's this lack of independence is is really hard for me and reaching out to people is hard but um, you know I'm, I'm very thankful for everybody in my life right now because they are what have kept me going and that includes all of you out there especially the ones who I talk to on Skype um, it is it has made my circle of friends grow and being able to talk to you when I'm having a bad day and you all understand way more than anybody else does um, and and I'm not capping on or, or saying anything negative about my friends. They understand and they really try as I explain things to them, but certain things people just will not understand because this disease is so undescribable sometimes. So to have that connection with so many of you has really, really helped me and um, my mental state. So um, I want you guys to to share your stories of how MS has impacted your life. Um, I hope that you're honest about it. I know some of this could be kind of raw and um, hard to deal with and and to put out there. But for those of you who who feel you can, I, I look forward to seeing your videos. Or your your written comments um, especially after once again talking to Christine today who lives alone I, I give her so much credit she is so strong and she doesn't realize how strong she is 
and for the people who are out there dealing with this who live alone how do you cope how you know do friends help you um, and family how are you dealing with this by being alone so that's it and I hope uh, to hear from you and I hope everybody's doing well thanks again everybody for being a part of this community you have you've helped me in ways that you can't even imagine all right signing up for now bye